Second Kings chapter 10, still dealing with Jehu. He's killed the uh, king of uh, Israel, has killed the king of Judah because of their sins. Jezebel has died. And verse 1, And Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters. I mean, letters in the Old Testament are not very good. David wrote a letter for Uriah. And sent them to Samaria, unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now as soon as this letter cometh to you, see if your master's sons, Ahab's sons, are with you, the seventy, and there are with you chariots and horses, military, and fenced city also, and armor. So you're behind the fence wall, as America's trying to do today. You got armor, you got military. You got the strength, you got these 70 sons, they're protected. Or are they? Look even out the best and meetest of your master's son. Of those 70, get the master, get the best, get the, the elite of the elite of those 70 sons. Get them. Set him on his father's throne. Establish a kingdom and fight for your master's house. Now, what Jehu is saying, listen, you guys establish your government, establish your throne, establish your armies, because ready or not, here I come. That's what he's doing. And I'm going to do you battle. Uh, prepare for battle. I've sent you a letter. But they were exceedingly afraid and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him, Jehu. How then shall we stand that would be Jehoram and Azahiah? Listen, these two kings fell at Jehu. <laughs> Uh-oh. And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, rulers, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, the 70 sons of Ahab, uh, yeah, Ahab, sent to Jehu, saying, we are, we're afraid, we are thy servants. We give up. We're not going to, I mean, they're turning away from Ahab and his family. We're going to turn to you, Jehu. And we do all that thou shalt bid us. We will not make any king. Do thou that which is good in thy eyes. We're not going to fight you. We're not going to rebel against you. What do you want? If we make a king. You're only going to defeat us. So, to prove the loyalty, then he wrote a letter the second time to them. So, we know 1st, 2nd Timothy. We know 1st, 2nd Thessalonians. And, you know, 1st, 2nd Peter. But do you know about the 1st, 2nd letter of Samaria? Here it is. Who's the writer of the first and second letter of Samaria? Jehu. Just like the church. One letter sent off, then another letter sent off. He wrote the letter the second time to them saying, if you be mine, all right, if you're going to give to my authority, you're going to give under my hand. And if you will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of the men of your master's sons, the 70 sons of Ahab, and come to me to Jezreel by tomorrow this time. All right, bring those 70 boys because they're my enemy. They're the king's family. They're my enemy. And we'll see later it's a prophecy that they're to die. Now the king's sons being 70 persons were with the great men of the city, which brought them up. You know, they didn't, Ahab just didn't put his sons in charge of anybody. But there was a elite men that took care of his sons. And it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons and put their heads in baskets and sent him sent, sent him them to Jezreel. That's a little hard reading. So they beheaded the, the sons of Ahab. So here's the, I mean, there's, there's nothing more to say. Here's his head without the body. We took care of it. It's dead. 
Now, Islam gets this from the Old Testament, but we're under grace. We're under God, Jesus Christ, <coughs> said to love the brethren, love your enemies. No Christian is called for beheadment. No Christian is called to arms of his own of his own doing of war. Now we're to obey the government in war. And the government has a has a war, has a battle, we're to go and fight just as much under the government. But as Christians, as the body of Christ, we don't do this. This is Old Testament. This is for the kingdom. The Jews require a kingdom, and anything that upset that kingdom, God says, go in there and kill them. When you go into the land of Canaan, wipe out everything that's not me. Now, that's what the Catholic Church has done. Because the Catholic Church has got into a kingdom. We're not going for a kingdom. We're going for lost souls. And slew 70 persons and put their heads in baskets. And sent him them to Jezreel. All right, here's our loyalty. Your enemies, we killed them. Rightly divine the word of truth is we don't kill nobody today. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, They they have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering of the gate unto the morning. All right, let's display them. Sounds kind of cruel, but What's the message? Don't fight. Don't rebel against Jehu, or you're going to be just like that. That's capital punishment. Capital punishment in the Bible, God says, listen, if you're going to commit this crime, you ought to die. And if you die for that crime, it's to deter someone else to say, well, I want to kill. I want to do that sin. But the guy down the road is here no longer because. Of that sin that I want to do. Uh-uh. I don't want to put my family in disgrace. And I don't want to end my life early. And the fact is. There are things in the Bible. That people say today. Well there's no deterrent to crime. Yes there is. And when you're walking into this city. And you come to the gate. And you say. What are those heads? Ew. Those are the heads of the king Ahab that went against God and that they may not go against Jehu. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and he said to the people, ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master and he did, but he had orders from God and slew him. But who slew all these? I mean, look at these heads. <clears throat> Now, remember, excuse me, know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord had done that which he had spoken by his servant Elijah. All right. Jeroboam and his family has been dead. I forget the one right after him. Ahab now and his family are dead because they sinned against the Lord. It's supposed to stop you from sinning against the Lord. It's to say, Israel north now, Samaria north now. Let's get right with God. That's a wonderful idea, but it doesn't happen. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel. So there were others left. Aunts, uncles, cousins. Jehu went in there and slayed them all. And all his great men, those ones that brought up his sons, and his kinfolks, Family of families of families. And his priests. Look at his priests. Not God's priests. Not Levites. So there's that religion of the government of state religion. And we have our priests. And Jehu said they're gone. They're dead. Now we're not to do that today. Now we have an idea today. You know. Going out and, and witnessing the Catholics. We're not going to slay them. They won't turn into Christ. Just, Tell them about the gospel, and that's between them and God. We don't slay nothing. But as the government in Romans 13, what should the government do? According to the Bible, the government powers there, they ought not to give religion the freedom of do whatever you want to do, because look at the mess this country's in. Look at the mess England's in. Um, England is ahead of what America will be, because they allow and he arose and departed and came to Samaria. 
And as he was at the shearing house in the way, so here's a place where they sheared the sheep, Jehu met with the brethren of Azahiah, the king of Judah, now that's down south, he's dealt with Ahab north, who are ye? And they answered, we are the brethren of Azahiah, and we go down to salute the children of the king, Jehoram, and the children of the queen, those are the 70. Here are people in Jerusalem worshiping the true God. And they're coming to Samaria with idolatry and priests and calves and other religions. And they're coming down to say hi to the royalty against God. And he said, take them alive. And they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the shearing house. Even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. They're doing wrong. They're, they are promoting, they are for the false worship of God. And the law told them, you got to die. And we was departed thence. He lightened on Jonadab, the son of Rachel, Rachel, Rachab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him and said to him, Is thy heart right? <laughs> you, better, you better say yes, and it better be. As my heart is with thy heart, unity. And Jeboram answered, It is. If it be given me thy if it be, give me thy hand. Unity. Handshake. Come up. He's gonna pull him into his chariot. And he gave him his hand. And he took him up to him into the chariot. So he pulls him into the chariot. Come up. Chariot's big enough to hold two men. And he said, this would be Jehu, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord, Jehovah. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained of Ahab in Samaria. Although they hid. There are ones that ran out. When he, we read, he killed the family of Ahab, but there were some that ran away. Now he's gone away, they come out of hiding. He's back. We got him. Till he had destroyed him. According to the saying of the Lord, again, which he spanked by Elijah. Elijah said that the Lord said, your family's going to be dead. Some of them fled, got right, but they're dead. And Jehu gathered all the people together. And we're going to stop right there in verse 17. Verse 18 in a little bit is going to pick up a new subject. Worthy of a new night. 